Okay, mathematicians, it's time for 5.2, congruent polygons. How do we know if polygons are congruent? Two figures are congruent if and only if there is a rigid motion or a composition of rigid motions that maps one figure onto the other. You learned in the previous chapter in transformations that the rigid motions are translations, reflections, and rotations. A rigid motion maps each part of a figure to a corresponding part of its image. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. So these shapes are congruent. There's some rigid motions that you could do to map these shapes on top of each other. So for example, you could translate this a little bit and reflect it, translate it some more. With this, you could simply rotate it and translate it and they would map onto each other. These shapes are not congruent. Clearly, you can see that they are different sizes or shapes. So these two triangles are congruent, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. But wait a second, be very careful. When you're naming, when you're making a congruent statement, the order matters, okay? So if you look at triangle, at this first triangle on the left here, I'll call it triangle ABC. Okay, and notice that when I call a triangle ABC, notice the congruence marks, I go from one congruence mark to three congruence marks to two congruence marks. So when I make the statement that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, I have to match up the vertices. So if I call this ABC, I have to go one congruence mark, three congruence marks, two congruence marks, like I did here. So triangle ABC does in fact match up with triangle DEF. And you can see that these are also, the vertices are also color coded. So the corresponding angles, angle A is congruent to angle D, B congruent to E, and C congruent to F. They're color coded, but they're also, you can tell by the congruence mark. One congruence mark, one congruence mark, three, three, two, two. For the sides, the sides also have to match up. Side AB, if we're going red, blue, or one to three, that matches with red, blue, or one congruence mark to three congruence marks. Okay, so you have two congruence marks for the side, two for the side. Side BC matches with side EF, and then side AC matches with side DF. So here's a cool little video that I found. Um, to share with you to give you a better visualization of polygon congruence. This has no sound, so it's a little over a minute long, uh, but just enjoy the video. So this is from a software package called GeoGebra. And you can actually do this. Um, it has a slider and it shows that when you slide, it shows really what congruence of these two triangles means. And you can change, when you change one of the triangles, it automatically changes the other triangle. And then you can slide it. So it's showing you the composition of rigid motions that maps one figure right on top of the other. There's a translation and a rotation. So these two shapes are always staying congruent. The size and the shape are always remaining the same from red to green. So now when you slide, what is the composition of rigid motions? There again, you have a translation and a rotation. Pretty cool. Okay, so here's our first example. 
let's identify corresponding parts. So let's write a congruent statement for the triangles. So when you write the congruent statement, be very careful. Make sure you match up the proper vertices in your statement. Then let's go ahead and identify all the corresponding parts. That should have an S there, all the corresponding parts. And how many parts are there to a triangle? Well, one triangle has three sides and three angles. So a triangle, the simplest polygon of all, a triangle has six parts, okay? So we're gonna match up six corresponding parts. So let's first write the congruent statement. So when you're looking at a diagram like this, okay, it's easiest if you go ahead and rotate one of these. So in this case, I rotated this triangle to get to this diagram. And it's easiest if you kind of put them in the same orientation, okay? Especially if, you know, uh, visual learning isn't your strongest suit. Strong visual learners, you don't have to do that. You can just do that with your eyes. You can just match up the correct vertices and the correct sides with your eyes. But those of you that struggle a little bit visually, it's better if you redraw the diagram so that they're sitting in the same orientation. So now this problem is gonna be a lot easier to handle. So let's first write the congruent statement. So if we call this first triangle JKL, and then what are the vertices that match? Well, J has two congruence marks. It matches with T. Three congruence marks, three congruence marks. So K matches with S. And then finally, vertex L matches with vertex R. Okay. So this congruence statement, if this visually is very confusing to you and you're really struggling with this, you can actually see all the sides and all the angles just in this statement alone. Okay. How? Well, if I have a congruent statement, triangle JKL is congruent to triangle TSR, the vertices of this triangle are J, K, and L. So I know that vertex J matches with vertex T because they're in the first position. In the second position, K matches with S, and L matches with R. The sides are in here as well. Side JK, which is side JK, matches with side TS. Likewise, KL matches with SR, and then JL matches with TR. So those are actually all of the corresponding angles and corresponding sides, which you could get all six of these just from this statement. Okay, in example two, now we have slightly more complex polygons. We have two quadrilaterals, and we're given that the quadrilateral DEFG is congruent to the quadrilateral SPQR. Now remember, this statement alone gives us lots of information. We know that D matches with S, E matches with P, F matches with Q, G matches with R. We also know that side DE matches with SP, EF matches with PQ, and so forth. So we're asked to find the value of X. Okay, well, where is X? X is right here, and X is here. Well, with this X, it's part of an expression that has an X and a Y, two variables. So let's use this expression up here, 2X minus 4. And we can tell, is this an angle or a side? Well, just look at the units. The units are feet. So we know that that is not an angle, because angle units are always degrees. So we know that that is... 2x minus 4 feet, that is referencing the length of QR, this side. Well, here's QR right here. What does that match with in DEFG? That matches with FG. Visual learners, strong visual learners, you can actually just simply rotate this uh, counterclockwise with your eyes, okay, or rotate this clockwise with your eyes, and you can already match up the sides. You can see that 2x minus 4 is going to match up with 12. Those of you that struggle visually, just go back to the congruence statement. And since you know that this is QR, match that up with FG from the congruence statement. So find the value of X. Let's just go ahead and make a, an equation and solve the equation for X. So we know that this matches with that. So that's our equation. So 12 equals 2X minus 4. Let's add four to both sides, divide both sides by two, and we discover that X equals eight, okay? So that is part A. They've asked us to find the value of X. We found it, X equals eight. 
Now, do you have to put units there? No, because X by itself is not the length of, is not a measurement, it's not the length of something, okay? It is inside of this expression, which already has units of measurement right here. So X by itself, X equals eight, we do not have to say X equals eight units. Okay, part B. Now let's find Y. Well, here's Y, it's part of an expression that has X and Y. No problem, we solved for X. So this X can get plugged into there. So what's the equation that we're gonna use? Well, we know that this 6y plus x expression is matching its angle q, so it's matching angle f. So this entire thing equals 68. We're going to go ahead and solve for that, and we find that y equals 10. Here's a very intuitive theorem. It's called the third angles theorem. If we have two triangles, and the two triangles are congruent to each other, okay, if we know that two of the angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then we know that this third angle must be congruent to this third angle, and that is called the third angles theorem. And this is a very intuitive theorem. It comes, really, it comes from the triangle sum theorem. Okay, so... This is very useful. So let's go ahead and use that in this next example. So in this example, we have a complex diagram. And by that, I mean that the two triangles are overlapping each other. Now, those of you that struggle a little bit visually, you should probably redraw this as two triangles that are not overlapping. Okay, so you would draw triangle ACD and triangle BDC and draw, that, draw them separately, okay? Those of you that are strong visual learners, you can organize this information visually and you can block out certain parts of the diagram and it won't bother you, okay? So let's go ahead and find the measure of angle B, D, C. B, D, C is this big angle. Well, this big angle is the third angle of triangle B, D, C, right? So here's vertex B, here is vertex C for triangle BDC. And then this angle that we're trying to find the measure of, that's the third vertex, okay? So that third vertex actually matches this vertex over here, angle ACD, all right? So we know that angle A is congruent to angle B. That's given to us in the diagram. And so if angle A measures 45 degrees, angle B measures 45 degrees. We are also given that these two angles are congruent. So angle ADC, okay, which is part of this triangle, ADC, is congruent to angle BCD, which is part of this triangle, BCD. Okay, so these two little acute angles, that's 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees. So now if you can block out this triangle on the right side and just look at triangle ADC, we know the measures of two of the angles. 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So we can figure out the measure of this third angle because the three of these add up to 180 degrees. So we know that the measure of angle ACD is just 105 degrees. And then the third angle's theorem tells us that this angle over here is also gonna be 105 degrees. Here's another example, another complex diagram, okay? So now we're gonna do a proof, okay? So we have two triangles which are not really overlapping, but they're kind of stuck on each other. But be careful when you look at these two triangles because you have two congruence marks here. So that vertex, that angle matches with this angle over here. And then this angle has one congruence mark, so that matches with this angle. Likewise, this side matches with this side, and this side matches with this side. Okay, so be very careful as you're doing this proof. So how do you prove that two polygons are congruent? Well, the only way that we know how to prove that right now, in the next lesson, things are going to get a lot easier. But right now, we have to prove that all the parts of one polygon are congruent to all the corresponding parts of another polygon. So since these are triangles, 
we have to prove six things are congruent to six things, and then we can conclude that the two polygons are congruent. So here we go. So first, let's write down all the givens. Okay, from this diagram, what are we given? Well, we're given that this side AD is congruent to this side CB. We're also given that this side DC is congruent to this side BA. Okay, we also are given that angle ACD, ACD, okay, this two marks is congruent to angle CAB, two marks. And finally, we're given that angle CAD, one mark, is congruent to angle ACB, one mark. Okay, so we're given one, two, three, four, four things. We just need to find the other two. Okay, so here we go. First step is let's write some of the givens. Okay, let's write some of the givens. So let's deal with the sides first and then the angles next. That's how we're going to organize our thinking here. Okay, because we have to find all six things. So let's first find all three sides, then let's find all three angles. Okay, so these first two sides are given to us as congruent. Those are given. This third side is a shared or common side, right? This segment is common to both triangles. It's a side of this triangle and it's a side of this triangle. So we simply say that segment AC is congruent to segment CA, and that is the reflexive property of congruence. Question, why didn't we say that segment AC is congruent to segment AC? Why didn't we say that? Okay, because if you look up here in this what we're asked to prove, which is right here and also right here, okay? Segment AC in this triangle, segment AC matches with segment CA. Remember I said that these statements, these congruent statements, match up all the sides and all the angles, okay? So segment AC matches with segment CA. Okay, visual learners, you can just look at the diagram and know that segment AC has to match up with segment CA because if you're going from A to C in this triangle on the left side, that's one congruence mark to two congruence marks. Okay, so the same segment on this triangle on the right side has to go from one congruence mark to two congruence marks. That's why you have to write it this way. If you wrote it as segment AC is congruent to segment AC, it would be wrong. You would lose credit. So now we have all three sides. Let's deal with the angles. Okay. So we're given these two angles, that is given. So how do we know that angle B is congruent to angle D? Okay, how do we know that angle B is congruent to angle D? Well, that's just the third angles theorem. So now let's take a look at what we have. We have all three sides are congruent to three corresponding sides, and we have all three angles are congruent to three corresponding angles. Therefore, we can finally conclude a triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. Pretty long proof, isn't it? Pretty long and exhausting. Well, you're going to really appreciate the next couple sections in this chapter because in the next few sections in this chapter, we're going to learn some really cool shortcuts for proving that triangles are congruent. That's all I've got for you. Please enjoy your homework and we'll see you in the next lesson.